Hi, everyone, and welcome to our third installment in our video series showcasing the BricsCAD surfacing functionality available in Survey Tools for BricsCAD. My name is Kaylee, and I'm here for Microsurvey to demonstrate how easy and intuitive working with surfaces can be for Survey Tools users. Our previous videos have shown viewers the basics of creating surfaces and editing surfaces. And in today's video, you will learn how to do a volume calculation. Volume calculations are done by creating and comparing two different surfaces, and the difference between the two surfaces equates a volume or a quantity of material that either was or will be removed or brought in. Volume calculations are a large part of the work that I do um, from day to day in my various roles. I use this method to track construction as built progress, um, as well as determine pay item quantities when doing contract administration. Um, but volumes can be as simple as just calculating an excavation quantity um, or a stockpile volume to see what your cutter fill was. Survey Tools for BricsCAD offers a super streamlined workflow for volumes, and I can't wait to show it to you guys. So let's get to it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is open up this drawing here that contains some 3D data for us. And for this demonstration, I'm going to show you how to calculate a stockpile volume. And the first thing we're going to do is we need to create our two comparison surfaces, the base surface, which will represent our original ground, and the comparison surface, which will represent the ground after it has been worked on, or in our case, the top of the stockpile. So I went over the surface creation workflow for the first video of this series. So I'm not going to go into super detail with this section, um, but let's just go along here and create the two surfaces. It's surface one. And we're going to call that our top of pile. Oh, we can see here that there's an erroneous point. So we'll just remove that. And then if we use our 3D viewer to orbit around the surface, we can just kind of have a quick look at it and uh, make sure that uh, it looks correct. And I'm going to change the color for the demonstration just so it's easier to distinguish between our two surfaces. So now I'm going to turn that surface off and now I'm going to select this outer break line and create our base surface um, or our original ground surface using um, that break line. And I am going to change the color on that as well and have a quick look at that. So you can see here that all of the, um, the, the points with the elevation, which was the top of our pile, all of those are not included in this surface. It's just the, uh, the original ground. Um, which is just basically the uh, the flat ground before we brought the material in. I'm just going to rename that surface. So the next step is to compare the two surfaces and generate the stockpile quantity. Um, you might have noticed I just went to the top of pile surface visual style and I've turned off the triangles. So this is just to declutter the workspace for us a bit visually. Um, so let's get to it. Um, so I'm going to click on Volume Surface in the Civil Workspace and then on Create. The command line will ask me which tin is the base surface. I will specify the original ground as a starting point, And then when prompted for the comparison surface, I will click on our top of pile tin surface. Now, if you look down below, you will notice that the software has generated a volume surface that shows the cut and fill amounts above or below zero. So in the case of a stockpile, we will see only fills, whereas if it was an excavation, we would have a quantity of material that had been cut. So if you had accidentally mixed up the base and comparison surfaces um, when you were inputting uh, in the command line, you'd be able to quickly tell at this stage, um, just delete it and then recreate the volumetric tin. Okay, so now that we have done the calculation, we need to be able to look at the results and actually glean the required information from the data. So to do this, you want to select the volumetric surface and then look over to the right here to the properties menu. Okay, so down here in your tin statistics, you're going to be able to see options such as the number of points in your selected surface, the number of triangles, um, your surface area, and the minimum and maximum elevation. 
and then down under the tin volume statistics, that's where you're going to get your volume. So your cut or your fill quantity that you would need to report. So that's the basis of how to calculate volume quantities in survey tools for BricsCAD. Compared to some of the other programs that I've used for this workflow, I found that the BricsCAD surfacing functionality in survey tools allows for all the work to be done directly within the main workspace. There's no need to navigate up to the ribbon um, or to open any separate utilities or dialogues um, to set up your volumes or to customize anything. It's all available directly at your fingertips which in turn makes the entire process more streamlined, more efficient, um, quicker and easier. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something new. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out as always. And if you haven't yet already, make sure you get your free demo of Survey Tools for BricsCAD from the microsurvey website. Um, and you get to experience the ease of use firsthand. Bye for now and see you in our next video.